former D.C. homicide detective and Fox News contributor Ted Williams trying to wrap my head around this, Ted, as you are. I, I want to bring this up, and we're going to talk about the timeline of the 911 calls because that is so important here. But the reason the DPS says the police say they did not go in is because a commander on scene said it was no longer an active shooter situation. But again, let's go back to the timeline. At 11.33, the shooter enters the classroom. At 11.35, mm -hmm. there are seven officers, seven officers on scene. Two minutes later, it is clearly still an active shooting situation, and yet they don't go inside the classroom. This uh, trace is just unspeakable. Uh, you know, just think about it. These children, these 19 angels and two teachers were being slaughtered while 19 police officers at the 1203 hour is out there in the hallway saying that this is a barricade situation. And you would have to believe with all of these uh, young people calling in, saying, please send the police, send the police. Also telling them that we have students that are still alive in here. You would have anticipated that someone would have overruled that commander and went and made a, a breach of that door and tried to save lives. And so the yeah. question that begs for an answer, Trace, is how many, how many lives could very well have been saved if the right decision was made? where we've been told by uh, Colonel McGraw the wrong decision was made. Yeah, and I'll tell you, when those 911 calls are eventually released, Ted, there will be a brand new reckoning because it, it is not nearly as emotional or compelling for me to read them, but I'm going to read the timeline and get your response. If we can put this up, 1203, a female student from inside room 112 calls, right? She calls back, advises. She was whispering, by the way, when she said she was in room 112. At 1210, she calls back, advises multiple dead. 1213, she calls again. 1216, she calls again and says that eight to nine students are still alive. This is 46 minutes after after the gunman enters, or 43 minutes after the gunman enters the school. 1219, a new female student calls from room 111. 1221, hear three shots fired during that call. At 1236, the initial caller, the girl says, he shot the door. And here's the staggering one for me, Ted. At 1243 and 1247, a caller asks 911 an hour and 16 minutes after the gunman enters to please send police now. And there are some 27 police officers outside the door, Ted. You know, this is such an embarrassment. Lives have been lost that perhaps could have been saved. These kids were crying for help. They were calling out, asking for help. And you've got law enforcement officers standing out, waiting for a, a barricade situation and waiting for a SWAT team. They should have immediately moved in their trace and tried mm -hmm. to uh, neutralize this person. Just think about it. I, yeah. I read where one young lady was in there and she took the blood of one of her classmates right. and put it on her body and remained still in order to try to live. There are so yeah. many stories that are coming out now about other kids that were alive, alive, and they had to go through this traumatic incident. And some of them have now, uh, it, it, it's just outrageous, Trace. Including the story of one young girl who police called out and said, are you, are you okay? And she said yes, and then she was shot. Ted Williams, it's always great to get your insight on this. It's a horrific situation. Thank you for coming on.